up with Adam McDooglies. What's up, everybody? It is a Sunday night of all fucking yeah. nights. <laughs> Labor Day weekend. So we've got some right. time off, and you know how I roll on Neon Trash. Any free time is movie free time. And tonight's no different. Adam McDooglies, what you got on the docket tonight? Well, on the docket tonight is a movie I've actually been wanting to show Tom for quite some time. Mm. It is called El Topo, and it is by the uh, director Alejandro Jodorowsky, who was a um, he was a Mexican director who's you know very artsy in his own way. He came out primarily in like you know the 60s and 70s, and uh, he influenced everyone from you know Dennis Hopper to you know Marilyn Manson. Uh, mm. So he was quite prolific. But um, yeah, I mean, I, I figured you know it's with it being Labor Day weekend, the end of summer, nothing says summer to me more than a spaghetti western. So ah, yeah. this is done around the same time as many spaghetti westerns and like it has the vibe of it. And in that sense, it's an art house western. It is, I guarantee, the strangest western you will ever see. I actually can't wait to watch this. I've heard nothing but good things about this movie. Dale has hyped yes. it up. In Adam fact, has hyped it up. Yes, in fact, it was uh, our buddy Dale Henderson who actually first showed it to me. And when I saw it, I was like, wow, I think Tom would like this too. Yeah, and you guys know I love spaghetti westerns. I was raised on this shit. So let's just kick it off, get right to it, fuckers. Here's the trailer. Peep that shit. We'll be right back. Is definitely a Western that follows the beat of its own drum. That's yeah. the one thing yeah. you could say about this movie. To put is, it mildly. Yeah, it's it does its own thing. <laughs> and it kind of starts like uh, a conventional, you know, spaghetti western in the sense that it's very violent, very artistic, very yeah, draws upon the same themes that, you know, right, that you would expect. Would. Yeah, yeah, that what you would expect from, you know, an international western such as this. Um, but it eventually transitions into something a lot more, wouldn't you say? Oh, yeah, very much so. I mean, yeah, it just it starts off in territory you're familiar with. In fact, it's already kind of taking, you know, the traditional theme of speaking westerns to like the ninth degree. But then it just it totally goes off the deep end, and that's yeah. what's so amazing about this movie. I mean, every time, I mean, this is my second time viewing this as a whole. It's, it's an just as much an experience as it was the first time. I mean, this movie is something else. <laughs> yeah, and, and you know, that's a, that's a good point, is that, like, watching the movie, it could be, like, a serious undertaking. Like, if you're not prepared for what this movie <laughs> yeah. um, is trying to, you know, convey, uh, artistically and message-wise, that it might be a little too much for yeah, you. Yeah, it, it can be overwhelming. You have to be kind of be prepared for what you're watching. That this is a weird fucking movie. <laughs> Easy Rider <laughs> in the Wild West. Yes, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's talk a little bit about the main character uh, of this movie here. He's kind of a dark, brooding no-nonsense character and you're, you're drawn to him but you're not at the same time. He was kind of like Clint Eastwood meets Jesus basically. Ah, ah. <laughs> yes, yes. And uh, because you know both because of you know how good they were in terms of you know being you know 
sharpshoot, you know, a, you know, gunslinger and all that, as a, and then like as a, as a religious figure because like right. this dude really does go on this huge like mystic quest. It's almost got like a sword and sorcery element too as oh, well yeah, yeah. because you know he's a you know epic gunslinger who becomes a hero who goes off on this quest to become like the you know the greatest gunslinger in the land and he just like meets these four like mystic ma mystic gunslinger masters who he has to conquer. But in the end, there's almost like this, you know, this, there's this commentary on be, sort of becoming the best, so to speak. And then there's almost this whole redemption path he has to follow <laughs> afterwards at, you know. Once right. he learns that, like, status really means nothing, and it's, like, you know, just... it. This movie also, like, in, I thought it was interesting, it was social commentary, because, you know, you it takes place during ostensibly the Old West, albeit a really drugged-out version of it. You know, that being said about the overall movie, let's talk about the shift in tone. It's the elephant in the room, so to speak, with this film. Here you've got the first hour, and it's like decidedly a specific tone. Yeah. You know, even though it's all over the place. But then you get to the second portion of the film, and it's almost like yin and yang, the other side of the coin. Yeah, very much. Um, and I, I'm not going to say that I was necessarily drawn to this final portion of the movie. I didn't feel like any of it was phoned in or unnecessary by the director. I feel like he had a point to prove that I, uh, narratively speaking, wouldn't have gone for. You know, the movie itself is very artistic, and that I can appreciate. So I feel like this movie is very significant, in my opinion. Yeah, me too. I mean, this is, I mean, this is like a pretty epic piece of filmmaking. I mean, this is like, you, you look at back at this and you can understand how like filmmakers from this time period from the 60s and like you know 70s and all that went you know I mean just the, the extent they were trying to take film to right. I mean, nobody had ever done anything like this before no this movie and goes into new yeah, territory it does yeah I mean this dude was this dude you know Jodorowsky was a pioneer and it just goes to show how much he was you know right like, it's just I it's mean, violent like a, a Peckinpah film yeah but it's also got that artistic sentiment of you know, Sergio Leone, um, but it's it's got its own flair, you know, and that's the takeaway from this movie, is that you're going into this as a viewer that's probably watched a lot of westerns, maybe, and you want something that's a little different, coming at things from a different angle. So I was asking Adam as we're watching the movie, like, you know, how he felt about it compared to the, you know, spaghetti westerns. I'd have to say that, you know, Sergio Leone is still the maestro. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> but that's not to take away from this fact, movie you, whatsoever. You kind of have to watch uh, Sergio Leone's movies in order to truly get this movie. You know? Right, but right. This movie is a progression. You have to, like, work your way to this. You know, you have to kind of, like, know what the source material is drawn from. Whether or not you like what it's doing is kind of beside the point because this is a director that's making the film he wants to see. This isn't a studio film. No. This isn't. This is when directors had really did have true freedom to do full whatever the rain. fuck they wanted to do. And they know? still it's, like. There's a lot today. A lot of cases is brilliant. There's a lot today with independent filmmakers that do that too. But like that's the thing right there is these directors cannot be restrained by you know studio producers and movies like this will forever always be the ones that kick open the doorway yes, for art true. and understanding and something deeper when the viewer watches it on the screen. Yeah, and in a way, I mean, you look at like all the, you know, all the crazy stuff we've seen, you know, our entire lives growing up, you know, it's all, there's a lineage and, you know, it's all about, you know, establishing, you know, different, you know, boundaries of vision that, you know, could see and explore as an artistic medium. I liked it out of 10 stars. I could give El Topo yeah. <laughs> yeah. solid eight and a half. Oh yeah. I'm right there with you, man. I, I think I'm going to award this a solid eight and a half stars too, you know, because um, I mean, I just, I, it's not a film obviously that you could show everybody, no. but it's a film that like, if you love movies, you will totally appreciate and you will totally enjoy for what it is. Right. Um, just for the chances that it takes and for, you know, the, just the narrative flow of this movie, you know? I mean, right. and plus, you know, I mean, this, it, it is an epic film. I mean, it's just, it's like, a, it's like a smorgasbord. It's a feast. And it's like, you have to take it all in in order to sort of like, 
you know, force your way it. towards you know the ending conclusion of it. You know, I mean, right. just in terms of what it tries the, the the overall message it tries to impart to you. And um, I just, I mean, this film was awesome because it just shows like if a filmmaker who you know is really allowed to just you know do what they want to do and they're really good at what they want to do, like amazing things will result. And uh, this is from a time period where I feel filmmakers were able to take chances and yeah. do what they wanted to do and just make you know pure art for art's sake without any bullshit commercialization. And I, I agree with those sentiments.